Hi guys, nice to see you again. Now, let's run away from convention. I'm not going to tell you who my guest is. I am going to make you guess who he is. He's an entrepreneur. He's an intrepid blogger. He's a health freak. He's very muscly. In, you can find him on a daily basis on his blog. And he's also a speaker at the BFM Breakaway session. My name is Said Fardin Omar. You have to guess who my guest is and you are watching in person. Now, we all know sex sells, so I'm going to build this as one for the ladies. I have with me Mr. Noel Chalaya, the founder and the guy behind DailyMuscle.com. Thank you so much for joining us. My now, pleasure. did you guess right? And did I say he was muscly? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you look great. Uh, and thank you so much for having some time to be on my show. But you didn't always look this great. And I think the story behind how you got from not so great looking to being in shape right now yeah. is the basis of your business and how yeah. you do things. So tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, like you said, I was overweight when I was much younger. And um, so even after my schooling days, and even when I was in college, I was overweight. So it all started, uh, if you read my blog, you'll see the story where I, I mentioned that my mom is the one who actually insisted that I go to the gym. And of course, I didn't like the way I looked, yeah. but being young, you just don't want to admit things like this. So um, it started by me going to the gym and um, I was, I pretty much liked the way the workouts made me feel, made me feel and how they made me look after a couple of uh, weeks. So from then I actually started to lose some of that weight and uh, that's when I started my job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got into the IT industry um, where I worked for 8 years. So from someone overweight, I think I was about maybe 80, 80 plus kgs, um, I lost some of it. Um, started my job. I love my job. Um, I, I, I learned lots of things. It gave me lots of skills. And um, but working in an IT environment, it was it is high stress environment, especially towards my last few years um, as I took on a more senior position. Um, so writing proposals, you're staying up late at night, you've got to get up really early in the morning and so on. So I guess that eventually led me to uh, neglect my health once mm -hmm. again. And um, with stress comes added weight gain and over time I realized that I've actually let myself go. So, but it freaked me out one day when I stepped on the scale and I realized that, oh my gosh, I'm at 99 kgs, right. almost about to hit 100, so I cannot You're hit 100. You're just a couple of kilos short of a century mm. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but that freaked me out because here I am, I had a gym membership, I know what I need to do, but I'm not managing it. Yeah. So basically, I took control of things, um, enough is enough. And um, I was fortunate enough to also work in a company that allowed its employees to pursue the things that they liked. Okay. So, um, I was more into my gym routine, I watched what I ate, I started to bring meals from home. I was just more serious, I knew what I needed to do and I just did it this yeah. time. Yep. And um, that obviously sparked my interest even more and um, I started a blog. I wanted to sort of document the things that I did, mm -hmm. the workouts, the things that I observed and all that. So that's how my blog started. And um, before I knew it, I had lost a lot of the weight again. And um, that's when, at that point, I realized that I could actually do this as a career because my blog was quite a hit. Mm -hmm. And um, I got people writing to me, asking me for advice. How did I do things? How do I lose the weight? Mm -hmm. um, I then went on to take on a certification course um, to become a personal trainer. So I obtained that certification under the American Council on Exercise. And that's when I realized that, okay, so um, I now have a choice. Do I want to get back into this high-stress IT environment, which I love? Okay, which paid the bills, yep. um, it was good money, but here I had something else, but it was uncertain. My income's not going to be fixed anymore, but I love doing this. Yeah. So it was a leap of faith. 
to do that and it was scary for the first few months because you just don't know how much money is going to yeah, come you just in. don't know it's the uncertainty yeah and um, but uh, you know the interesting thing is that when I got off my job I also lost more weight without even trying so, so two questions at this yeah. point if I can just interrupt you number one was your blog called the daily muscle from the very get you know from the get-go yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it yeah. was so see, that's quite visionary already it, yeah it's you know, a very good catch i phrase. still remember how i did it you know it was and i did it and i bought the domain name while i was working late one night and i needed uh-huh. a break it was about 11 something at night i needed a break so what shall i do let's start a blog uh-huh. and i did the and i looked for the domain name dailymuscle.com it was available i think it was a great name so i bought it right yeah and and secondly um, would you say then that your success is accidental? Um, I would say my success isn't accidental because I mean, I have made, I've taken deliberate steps to be where, where I am today. Uh-huh. And, but I say that my blog has significantly helped me to grow my brand. Yep. So I didn't expect the blog to do that. Okay. So the blog was just supposed to be a pastime, uh-huh. you see, and then um, from free hosting, you then get your own hosting. Then I realized, okay, let's pump in some money into this blog. Let's uh-huh. do a proper design. Let's spend more money on it and see what this can do. Right. So that led to me being noticed, not only in Malaysia. I mean, I get people writing from all over the world and that's when that's I realized fantastic. that what I had in my hand was something more than just a hobby, mm-hmm. but I could actually change lives. Um, I could change the way people feel about themselves and that was, that's pretty powerful something I didn't get from my previous well, job. Well, powerful is uh, a very apt word to use indeed. Um, you have your blog. Uh, that basically kickstart the entire thing. Well, two things actually, your blog and your passion to actually get to a better place with yourself. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose these are the qualities that has made you today one of the speakers for the BFM Breakaway session. Yes. But let's talk about the depth and breadth of your business right now. You have the blogs and I know that you run you know, a torture camp uh, <laughs> at some point. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the stuff that you do. Yeah, okay, well, torture camp is, an, it depends how you view exercises. I call it the transformation camp. Um, basically a group of people mm-hmm. okay we do it outdoors um, and we've got a group of trainers who will basically motivate you to be um, to make the best use of that one hour so you show up you come through uh, we guide you through one hour worth of exercise and there's no equipment involved mm-hmm. so basically I've got um, I don't like calling it boot camps because boot camp has a very negative perception yeah. and boot camps usually use discipline as a way of getting you to do things for example if you show up late we punish the whole team. Mm-hmm. You don't wear your t-shirt, we punish the whole team. So that may work for some people. Some people want to be yelled at, but yeah. I don't know, I don't like to be yelled at, so I'm yeah. not going to yell at anyone. So what we do is we, yes, we have rules, but we don't force you to do things. But we let our participants encourage one another. And when they show up, you see, we've, I've had a 60-year-old come and do a certain exercise. And when a 30-year-old suddenly looks, and looks at a 60-year-old lady who's doing that, you realize that I've got no excuse. You see, so motivation takes place that way. So um, from my personal training, my one-on-one, I've actually grown into this uh, transformation camps, which now runs in three locations. Uh, we have a total of about 70 plus people right now who are under my care and who work with my trainers uh, to reach their weight loss or health goals. Okay, so yeah. um, camp, mm-hmm. uh, blog, Uh, And I'm sure you also do personal training as well. I do personal training, uh, which is what I started off with. So I love doing that because it's, I get to work with people Mm -hmm. one-on-one and you get to go really deep as in, because sometimes when you do sessions, if you work out with them at home, you get to look at what they eat. You get to look at, hmm, the kids eating that. So where did did the kid learn that from? So it's probably the mom. So Ah, so it's it's very interesting because you go very deep and you help people make changes that they didn't even knew the things that they needed to change. Yeah. So I've got that going on as well. Uh, I also do corporate work. So we do help talks mm-hmm. for companies um, because of my experience of working, working in a, a high stress environment. environment. So yeah. I know what it's like. I can relate and I know what it takes to make that change. Mm-hmm. So I have CEOs, I have directors of companies working with me and I can relate to people at that level. Yep. We can talk, we've got things to talk about. We have mutual interests because I am from that level as well. Yeah. So this is what I've got going on, and it's um, it's been pretty good so far. Well, it's great. It's yeah. it's it's a great story. Well, we have to go for a short break right now, but when we come back, we have more questions about 
you know, the successes of Noel. So stay with us on in person. Please have coffee. Amboi senangnya Hanya buat tiga panggilan ekstra sehari Dapat voucher RM5,000 percuma Jangan ketinggalan Setiap hari bermula jam 7 pagi Kerajaan memberi jaminan akta baru yang bakal menggantikan ISA akan mengikut segala perisi dia. Sekurang-kurangnya 16 orang terbunuh apabila gempa bumi kuat berukuran 8.8 magnitud menggegarkan timur Laut India. Rusia pentadbiran Afghanistan untuk memulakan undingan damai dengan puak Taliban di jangka tertangguh. Bersama Bulletin Awani bermula jam 7 pagi di Astro Awani Berita Segenap Dimensi. Okay, we're back. We have more questions to the businessman side of our note line. Now, Noah, yeah. now in the US, uh, entrepreneurship is a very daunting concept to a lot of people to, to leave the comfort of a paying job, a salary job to something that, like you said yourself, you don't even know where your next meal is coming from. You don't know if you're going to get any clients. In the US, three out of ten new businesses fail in the first two years of its operation. So what gave you the confidence to actually go headlong into this area? Well, um, like I mentioned before, it was a leap of faith. So, um, yes, there was uncertainty, but I'm actually very thankful to my company because when I, I you see, I stayed in that company for eight years, so that tells you how much I, I, I need security. Okay, so it was hard to make that leap, but um, when I left as well, my bosses said that um, you're very happy that you're doing this, um, but if If things don't work out, we are ready to take you back anytime. Oh, fantastic. Please come back anytime. So that was so encouraging. So I didn't leave with a heavy heart. Yeah. It was sad to leave, you know, but and just within months after doing that, I I used I, I used to reflect a lot as in like, um, this is what I was supposed to do. Um, then why was I in the IT industry for so long? I mean, why did I have to go through this? Um, but it came to a point where I realized that, you see, I needed to be overweight to understand what it's like to lose it. So I can help others. That's my personal conviction. Yeah. Okay. Um, I needed to be in the IT business to understand what it's like to work in such an environment. So I needed to be in the business as well to understand what it's like to blog. So I, everything you see in my blog, the design, the technical work, everything that goes behind was done by me. So I was able to start up everything um, with hardly any cost. Whereas most people, I think if they wanted to set up a website, they wanted to get things done, they would need to fork out a lot of money and get an IT company to come in and to do all those things. So it was easy for me to start things. So even if it didn't work out, I didn't really lose that much and I had a fallback plan. But um, I had the confidence that it would work. Um, fitness is something that is still at its infancy, if you ask me. Um, here in Malaysia, just look around you, gyms are thriving, you see health clubs still opening, There are more personal trainers today than there were even a few years ago. Um, when I got my certification here in Malaysia, um, we were among the very few first, the first batch to get it. Now there are every few months there's a batch of people who are passing the exam, right, so okay. which is great. So it's growing. Um, it can only get better because uh, look around you, people are not getting any slimmer. <laughs> see? We, we are getting more advanced. Uh, technology is getting more advanced. Our healthcare is top notch nowadays, but we're not getting any healthier. So there is a need for people in this business. So if you look at it from that sense, um, I think uh, this is a good industry to be in. So I had all of this, you know, so I, I knew why I had to go through what I had to go through. I, 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 I knew why my past had to take place and I had the leap of faith. Right, okay. Yeah. Now, what would you say, uh, what is it that you understand about the customers, the people that voluntarily look for you and tell you they want to have a difference in their lives? Um, what do I see in the difference meaning? No, how, what do you understand about your customers? Okay, um, when people come to me, it is usually for weight loss, all right? And here's the thing, sometimes they think that they want to, that what they need is an exercise routine. 
So I guess sometimes when they go to a gym or they or if they or if they approach a trainer who doesn't know what to do, they get prescribed a workout routine and they're told to do this and that's it. So they do that and that's not what they want. So when 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 you when I talk to a client for the first time, uh, we usually have a sit down session just like this. Yep. Okay. Uh, I get to understand, um, and if you just try to read behind the lines of what every client really wants, is that they just want to look good. Do whatever it takes. That's that's it. That's the bottom line. I just want to look, look good. So it, it's the ability to be able to one hear that request, okay, um, to, to really know whether some. Cause I, I've had some clients who they say they want to look good, but they don't really mean it. I've had clients who have been forced by their spouses. Uh, is there anybody out there that does not want to look good? No, I mean like they're not willing to make the commitment to change. Okay, so right. they come and they say, okay, yeah, I I want to do personal training, but you know they're being forced, and these are the ones that will usually after a few sessions they drop out. Okay, or they don't listen to you. They just show up for the sessions because they're trying to please someone. So <laughs> yeah, I've seen that happen. Okay, right. Okay. So in a in, in a sit down session with a client, when people come to me, um, it's very important. So I want to know it's their readiness to change. If you're ready to change, good. Because if you're willing to go really far, I will go very far with you. So um, it's being able to hear that and uh, coming up with the right program for them. So sometimes is, it's is not it, just exercise. Is there that a they sort want. of guarantee that you can give to your clients? Do you actually guarantee them that they will go through this and that? Um, I guarantee them that it will not be an easy journey. It will require, <laughs> oh it will require them being pushed out of their comfort zone. But, but think about it, when has anything ever come easy? I mean, like something worthwhile never, doesn't come, yeah. come easy. It, it takes hard work. So, but here's the thing, I will tell you exactly what you need to do. So you don't need to worry, right? So when you drive, you put on a GPS, you don't worry, right? Because it's yeah. going to take you there, right? Yeah. Um, but I took the GPS away. So that's the role. You, you actually facilitate you know, the thinking bit because you do all the thinking. No, Correct. I suppose, all, again, to a lot of people, you know, we're talking about entrepreneurship and then furthermore, we're talking to you. So it's entrepreneurship in a business that is not an everyday thing. A lot of people will have this question, is there money in? Uh, and yes, is, there is that your motivation to, to go ahead with the business? Yes. I will be honest to say that yes, when I when I first left, it's like okay, can this pay my bills, right? And leaving the IT industry to do fitness is like people were like, are you crazy? Yeah. Like, yeah. what do you study for and all that? But um, yes, there is money um, in it if you if you're willing to work hard. So if I always believe that a client who is committed to a trainer because. See what you're doing for a client is, I would say, it's priceless, right? Um, and if clients can see your value, um, they'll be willing to pay good money. I mean, a good example is look at some of the slimming centers around. People pay 10, 20, 30 thousand ringgit a month to be willing to change the way they look. Uh -huh. Okay, but that's a shortcut, and it's not the right kind of approach. That okay. gives you an idea of the amount of money people are willing to part yeah, with. Yeah, disposable you income see? out there. Yes. So yeah, if you are a good trainer. You're good at what you do. Um, there is a lot of money to be made. So, and okay. many successful trainers. I think that's a that's a that's a good point to actually go for another commercial break. Think about it. Not only do you get to be beautiful, but there's a lot of money to be made uh, if you really wanted to stay with us in person. We have more questions for now. Pati, pati ikan haruan, pati ikan haruan gamat, pati ikan haruan ginseng, menambah tenaga, meningkatkan selera makan, melegakan keletihan untuk wanita setelah bersalin. Mas Pati, hidup kekal cegas berseri. Mas Pati. Sebab sebenar lelaki ingin menjadi bintang rock Untuk memikat gadis Kadang-kadang kejayaan menjadi penghalang Saksi di Astro Box Office Movies tayangan hebat Telefon untuk melanggan Every Wednesday. Form and space. Light and shadow. Combine. What do you get? A house. And not just a house, but a home. 
Join Saeed Paradino Omar and Lina Wati Adnan as they help you find your dream house and turn it into your dream home. On In Realty, Wednesday at 9.30pm on Astro Awani. Okay, we're back uh, and this segment I'm going to open up with some numbers, with some facts that I found. Um, interestingly, I read yesterday, latest reports said that um, one in four school kids in Malaysia nowadays are overweight. So that's one in four. One in ten out of that are completely obese. So if nothing is done, one quarter of young adults in Malaysia uh, in the future will be unfit and therefore that would lead to loss of productivity, which is one of the seven major factors uh, a business fails here. Something needs to be done. What's your views on this? Yes, um, I think a lot of companies, talking about productivity, okay, um, a lot of companies are beginning to realize that the health of the employee um, plays a role. So that means like someone who's healthy, someone who exercises is going to take less MCs, less six, day, six days off. And so companies in Malaysia are starting to see the value in encouraging their employees to exercise and to, to start some form of exercise program. Um, and it starts young. You see, you mentioned that one in four kids are, are overweight. And I'm not surprised. Um, the lifestyle we have today is very, very different. And we like to always also blame it on, oh, now you have TV, now you have the PlayStation, now you have this. Everybody likes to play the blaming game, right? But if you look at it, you see, children are born without knowing good and bad. Yeah. So kids always pick this up from somewhere. Right? And studies have also been done to show that kids actually pick up a lot, especially eating habits from their mothers. So what their moms eat and do in front of them for the first few years of their life plays a huge role in where they will be. So the problem goes before school itself. So like, where did the kid learn that, hey, I'm going to have my Coke, I'm going to eat chips? Where did the kid learn that from? The kid probably watched the mom eating it. So. I think that a lot of emphasis needs to be placed on families um, for parents to be more aware of what you're doing in front of your child, right? You can't tell a child not to have that and then you go and eat it. Like if you keep lots of junk food in your house, and you're eating a lot of junk food, don't get upset when your kid is 10 years old and he's overweight and he's eating junk food and you're telling him to stop eating junk food. Yeah. So it is a much bigger problem. Um, which I hope that uh, the government maybe starts to realize that yeah. that's a greater emphasis. So maybe don't just look at school, start to look at kindergarten. Don't just look at kindergarten, start to look at the parents yeah. who are usually quick to blame, but they are usually at fault. Okay, well, you've mentioned government, so I think it's quite interesting. Um, you know, we, a lot of people do things because there's incentive in it. Um, now the government gives us incentives in terms of uh, tax cuts. If you take broadband, you can actually put that uh, against your, your tax. You can, you can claim uh, against buying sports equipment, yes, but you can't for gym membership when you're filing for your income tax. Yes. So don't you, do you think that that's one of the things that can be promoted, um, that can be done by perhaps the government in terms of policy making to actually encourage people to be more healthy? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've heard of organizations that give incentives to their employees. Like here, um, we, we give you a certain, number, uh, certain number of days off if you go to the gym. So certainly, um, I think the perception that people have as well uh, that towards staying healthy is that it takes a lot of money. Okay, so to a certain extent, yes, of course you don't need a gym to be able to exercise. I yeah. mean, you've got your two feet, just get up and walk. But um, joining a gym help, does help. Joining some sort of workout program does help in having something structured for you. So if the government can offer some sort of incentive, it, it will be good. You know, um, uh, it will certainly help. Yeah. Well, I, I, I really hope, you know, um, if we, we need people like you to actually, who's actually making a difference in the industry, in, in, in the very concept of healthcare uh, and healthy living to actually try and drive this idea further. But I think we've only got about a minute left in this interview. Okay. You know, we, we are having a, a nice coffee and tea here in Plan B, which is, uh, you know, as we discussed, one of your uh, favourite hangouts yeah, to, to, to come and lay pa when, when you're not working. No, tell me what your immediate short-term and long-term goals are? Um, well, my short-term goals would be to, well, 
to to see to see those um, to see my business succeed, of course. But really deep down inside, I would look at that as my long term goals. Um, I wish I could really make a change in things like you mentioned just our kids mm-hmm. and how they eat. But it is a humongous task. Okay. It is. Yeah. It is a humongous task. Being able to maybe influence schools, to influence um, what they eat in the canteens and all that, it's a big thing. But that's where it starts. So if you don't fix it from the very bottom, um, we're just going to get worse. We're not going to get any healthier as time goes by. So long-term goals is I would wish that you know towards a healthier nation. I mean that's that that would be a fantastic, a very fulfilling thing for me. Well, in the UK, you have Jamie Oliver working very hard to yeah. make a difference in school canteens through food and uh, to promote healthy living. Maybe you can be sort of like Jamie Oliver here, mm-hmm. Noel Talia, the daily muscle man who comes into schools and you know promotes healthy living. Well, Noel, yeah. it's been swell talking to you. My pleasure. Uh, best of luck in your business and best of luck, you know, in in bringing this agenda forward. You've been with me, Said Friday Noel, and I've been talking to uh, Noel Talia. Like I said, businessman, muscle man, entrepreneur, blogger, and one of the speakers of the BFM Breakaway session you've been watching in person. Stay healthy and we'll see you again soon next week. Take care. Bye-bye.